Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and with me today, the brain trust of the Azure tooling team in Visual Studio land, Paul Yucknicks, Dennis Angeline, Boris Scholl. Hi. Dennis and Boris have been on the show before. Welcome back, guys. Thanks. Paul, first time. Long time it's watcher, It's a pleasure first and an honor. Guest. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys are here today to show off the new Azure tooling in Visual Studio 2013. Visual Studio 2013 has RTM'd. Yes. The Azure SDK 2.2 is out. Yep. This is a big day. It's Excellent. a really big day. This time, super close to the RTM of 2013. So we're jazzed about that. Yep. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. It has never been easier to do Azure development in Visual Studio. Uh, you know, a year ago, 18 months ago, you wanted to do Azure. There was a lot to learn. You know, the tooling was there, but you had to do a lot yourself. Nowadays, it's unbelievably easy. The tooling is phenomenal. Um, and, you know, this is just my opinion, but it, it happens to be true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> and so, what you guys are here to do is show us um, the new tooling, talk about the Azure SDK. Right. So, let's go. Okay. How about I start and talk about the SDK a little bit? Excellent. OK, so uh, what everyone needs to know is there's Azure tooling that's a part of Visual Studio 2013, just in the box. So we have things like the mobile service uh, work that really helps with Windows Store developers. We have things like Windows Azure website tooling to make it really easy to, to stand up a website and put it on Azure. Um, and we have SQL tooling to work with SQL DB. Mm -hmm. So that's all already in Visual Studio 2013. You already have it. Then once you get the Azure SDK, uh, 2.2, which we'll tell you how to get it. It's on windowsazure.com. That brings a whole host of additional tools, so you can have tools against the storage resources, VM resources, a number of things like that. You can create applications more easily, like cloud services for multi-tier. Um, so you get even more with the SDK. So the, let's talk a little bit about the, the 2.2 SDK, but there's also the 2.1, there's Visual Studio 2013, 2012. What's the, what are the combos that work? Right, so what's, what's kind of going on there? So what I'm going to recommend for 2013, um, you should absolutely get the Azure SDK 2.2 mm -hmm. or higher. Um, that's the official release for 2013. That's really well supported. Um, you, c you can use 2.1. It's, it's compatible. It was out there in the RC time frame, but really you should go get 2.2. Right. Now with that said, um, our Azure SDKs typically work with two versions of Visual Studio at a time. So you can also use the Azure SDK 2.2 uh, with Visual Studio 2012. So if okay. that's what you have, you're not missing out on Azure development. You can still get the Azure SDK. Right. Yep. Um, and so some of the features that we'll see today are SDK features, which would be available to 2012. Yes. But then some of the tooling in 2013 is just in 2013. That's that's right. We'll, okay. we'll try to help uh, navigate which one is which, but you know, the, the, the crib sheet is if I'm doing mobile work or website work, that chances are that's already in 2013. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing additional things in Azure, the chances are we need the SDK. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. So, so what are we going to see first? So uh, I Take think we'll away. start off with showing the integrated sign-in feature. That's okay. one, of the, one of the big features that we've added in the SDK 2.2. So uh, we can take a spin here and show you how that works. All right. Cool. So, um, so I'm running Visual Studio 2013 here, um, and I have the Azure SDK 2.2 installed. Um, and we're going to take a, a quick spin around the integrated sign-in feature. So for those that have used the SDK in the past, um, you've had to use a management cert in order to authorize or, or, uh, Visual Studio to actually access your Azure services. And, and that's been a little bit challenging for some people, so we really focused on making that easier for, for customers and okay. users to get started with. So I think one of the things that people will be really happy to see is the ability now to just connect to, your, to Windows Azure directly from Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and do that to get started with here. Um, and I'm going to sign in here with my Microsoft account. Um, when I first connect to Windows Azure or go through that Connect experience, it'll ask me to enter a, um, a user ID there. I'm going to enter in my live ID. Okay, so I, I enter in my user ID there, and it brings me to a sign-in page that's specific to your Microsoft account. If you're using a different form of authentication, the sign-in screen might be a little bit different here. But for our Microsoft accounts, I'll just go ahead and enter my password in here. And um, now I'm signed in. So if I come back in here, 
You can see that Server Explorer is populating with the services that I have access to on my subscription. Mm -hmm. uh, if I come back in here and I go to Manage Subscriptions, you'll see that I'm currently logged on with this D'Angelina at Live.com. Right. And I have access to three Azure subs or two Azure subscriptions here. Now, for folks that are using Management Search or have used Management Search in the past, um, and that would be all of the customers prior to the SDK 2.2 release because okay. that was the primary or only means of, of gaining access to your Azure subscriptions. Um, you could go to the Certificates tab here and you can see that I have access to three separate subscriptions via Management Cert right. and then access to these two subscriptions via my Live ID sign-in or my, my Microsoft account sign-in. Now, you'll notice that they're the same subscriptions here. So here I have my Azure MSDN subscription and Azure Personal subscription, and the same yep. subscriptions are appearing here. So I can actually you work without signing in and use the management certificates alone, or I can sign in using my Microsoft it's account way easier and complement complement the, yes. uh, <laughs> the certificates I already have. Um, so you'll see now that there's really nothing different in Server Explorer because I'm, I'm I just have access to those same subscriptions. Right. So um, one of the things I want to point out to you um, is the addition of some new services in, in Server Explorer. So you can see, you can now see your SQL databases. So um, just by signing in and having access to those subscriptions, we've now added SQL databases to Server Explorer and websites, and we've added some new functionality and uh, new capabilities with virtual machines. So Server Explorer is really starting to uh, to, to fill out here. So you can now really stay provide. in Visual Studio instead of bouncing back from Visual Studio to the management portal right. and back. Now the management portal, of course, is, is way easier to use than it has been in the past. Yep. Yep. Um, but still, nothing's easier and better than being able to stay inside Visual Studio and use the Server Explorer to be working with that. Right. We, we think there's a set of things. Um, when you're building an app or you're diagnosing an app, you shouldn't have to leave Visual Studio right. to do those common tasks. So that's what we optimize for in the tool. Mm -hmm. And then there's a set of additional things you'll do in the portal. Right. Yep. Yep. So just to make sure that sign-in is really working here, let's go in and, and actually uh, remove those management certs. So I'm only going to remove two of them for right now. So you'll see I'll have access to this subscription called my Microsoft account via management cert, and then access to these two subscriptions okay. via my Microsoft account sign-in. And you should see the same functionality or the same display over here because I'm having access to the same same resources. Now you will notice that the SQL node isn't populated after I do that because for the time being the SQL node is only using Azure or management certificates ah, for authentication. Okay. So that's one case where you may, if you really want to see SQL databases there, you'll need to continue to use your management cert for the time being. We okay. expect that to be to you know be fully implemented um, in the first available update. Okay. So, so one way I think about it is that this new easy sign-in feature is a part of the SDK. So for the things that were already in Visual Studio, they'll <coughs> still use the, the management certs just for a point in time. Okay, so, we'll, sir, so that would, it would be an update of Visual Studio where we would see that. That's, that's right. Here. Okay. Right, so Visual Studio could carry the same features that the SDK carries. Got it. Right. Yeah, so it's important to know that some of the features in Server Explorer here ship as part of Visual Studio and yep. then some of them are added on Correct. with the SDK. Right. And the SQL node, the websites node, and the mobile services nodes are the ones that come in the box in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. So some customers might ask, in fact I saw a blog post just recently, how come SQL and mobile services and websites are the only thing that I'm seeing in Server Explorer? It's because you haven't installed the SDK yet. Got it. So when you install the 2.2 the SDK, you'll see those other mm -hmm. nodes light up. So, so now I have access to three subscriptions. Is there any thought of, of making it all or everything is installed by the SDK or everything is installed by Visual Studio or are there benefits to having it both ways? Are there yeah, I think, I think for a while we'll, we'll look at you know, really core functionality like sign-in. That's the kind of thing we'd like to see in Visual Studio. That, that should be at the core. There's some things that move really fast or that are pretty new that's mm -hmm. more likely to be in the SDK. And if we decide that it becomes core, then it can be actually okay. inside of Visual Studio. So I would expect to see there will continue to be more frequent updates in the SDK. And that's a good thing. We want you right. to get it faster. Some core things, you'll see more of that in Visual Studio. Right. So we'll, we'll strike that balance. But as long well. as you're, you're always up to date on the SDK and always up to date in the Visual Studio, you'll just get features. You've got, and, and where you've they got come the best from features. is kind of second. Exactly. We'll take care of that. Right. We'll do okay. the gymnastics for you. Yep. <laughs> so one of the things I want to point out that we shipped in the 
2.1 release was the ability to filter, and you can now filter yes. Server Explorer by subscriptions or by location. And, and so, if you really only want to see one of these subscriptions, or if you're only working with one at a time, you can mm -hmm. come in here, clear the subscriptions you're not interested or in. Or if you wound up with more subscriptions than you really needed, right. and I'm not sure why. I have two right. MSDN yeah. subscriptions, and I don't right. really understand why. Or if you're like why. Robert, I mean, Robert's got hundreds of websites, <laughs> so you got to really <laughs> filter it down a bit. Yeah. So now let's come in here to manage uh, my subscriptions. Um, and actually, so now I have one certificate and uh, two subscriptions that are accessing, uh, accessed via my Microsoft account. So I'm going to sign out with that account and actually sign in with a different account. And uh, I'll click this to, to go and sign in with a different Microsoft account. And you can see I have access to a completely different subscription. Okay. So uh, now I have a different set of resources available to me. So one of the things that, uh, that I also want to point out is let's jump over to the management portal here. And um, I'm, I'm logged on with my dangeline at live.com account right now. You'll go, I, if I go down here to Active Directory, you'll see that I have several directories created here. Mm -hmm. um, one that we want to take a look at is uh, VS Azure Tools. Now, um, for all users that have Azure subscriptions, um, you'll notice that you, you have an, a directory created for you. If you didn't already have a directory, there'll be a directory here called the default directory. Okay. If you already had a directory, there won't be a new directory, but all users will have at least one directory going forward. So uh, I've had this directory created for a while, and um, so I don't have one called default directory. Mine's called VS Azure Tools. So you can see I have users in this directory here. And it would be nice if I could like, uh, enter employees from my company here or use the integrated um, Windows Azure Active Directory mm -hmm. feature to, to integrate this directory with my on-premise directory. Um, but this gives me a directory that I can use to authenticate users that want to access an application. Now, if you're building your own application, you know, a line of business application, this is a perfect choice for Using, using for authentication. So you can build your line of business app, you can put your company employees in here or the mm -hmm. users of your application, okay. and you can use that for authenticating uh, access to your application. What we've done in Visual Studio, though, is en enabled this to work as a means of authentication for your Azure subscription as well. Now, you don't automatically get access to your Azure resources by adding a user in this directory, but um, you if you add a user to this directory, you can make them an administrator for your subscription, and then those users will oh, have access okay. to your subscription. So if we uh, take a look here uh, under my subscription, if I go to Manage Administrators, I only have my DeAngelinaLive.com subscription here mm -hmm. as an administrator. So if I go back in here and take this user, come into Administrators, and add an administrator for this account. And I'm going to say I want to give this Dennis at vsazuretools.onmicrosoft.com access to my MSDN subscription. And I could do that. Cool. Now if I come back here in Visual Studio, I'm going to sign out as this user, and I'll sign in with a different user account. Sign in with a different user account. And you see, I have there access to that cool. nice. MSDN subscription. Mm -hmm. And then the free trial subscription um, is a subscription that I had already created for that account cool. as well. So now I have access to a completely different set of subscriptions uh, via that, that mm -hmm. account. So. Um, you know, I could come in here and create new users in that directory and authorize them to access my subscriptions, and, and then if I can put my whole development team in there, and they, right. can, they can use the integrated sign-in feature rather than management certs. Um, so, so that kind of gives you a rough idea. We, the management certs uh, are still around and still available sure. for customers to use, but the integrated sign-in feature is much easier. It eliminates the need to have to create 
manage. You just have to remember your username and password. You have to remember your username and password. Which for most people is not that hard. For some people, maybe not. A minute to learn, lifetime to master. Exactly. Now, one other thing that you'll notice here is if actually Boris will go ahead and do a publish here shortly to publish a cloud service. So, whereas in the past you used to have the opportunity to import a management certificate, say during a publish flow, We've kind of retooled that that experience a bit. So now you have the ability to sign in during a publish or uh, at other places throughout the, the, Good. the experience here. That just where, streamlines yeah. it. Yeah. So if you're in the middle of doing a publish and you yeah. don't have the right, right uh, account signed in, you can sign in with a different account. Yep. So there's a lot of flexibility that you're showing, Dennis. But I think what you're also showing is it's just really easy, right? Once you sign in, you can get access to all of your resources all the time. Absolutely. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. Just get going. Yep. Right? And uh, you know, a couple of, <laughs> couple of things that, that come up is you can have access to multiple subscriptions, like I've shown here. You can make your user account an administrator in, in, in whatever subscriptions you want. Uh, so if you're using a management cert to get access to three subscriptions, just grant that user access to those three subscriptions and yep. you get the same behavior. Um, um, you, again, you do have to make them an admin. Simply adding them to the directory does not authenticate them or authorize them to do anything or to have right. access to anything. You have to add the user as an administrator as well. And then there's one scenario is uh, if you're using a, if you have multiple Microsoft accounts and you can't add those accounts as administrators to your subscriptions, like you want to use existing accounts and you for some reason you, your administrator won't allow you to add those as, as a, an admin, you would have to sign off and si sign back in with a different account. So you might right. have to switch accounts there to get access to different sets of resources. Sure. Okay. Um, and, and if that's the case, then again, you continue to use your management search and you'll be just fine. Right. Got it. Cool. Should we turn it over right. to remote Boris, logging? you're up. <laughs> sure. So let's talk a little bit about uh, diagnostics improvements uh, that we've done. Okay. So here we have a, a sample app, and I think I'm going to show you what the app does first, just to get an understanding of what it okay. does, and then um, we'll talk about the debugging options. So it's basically um, it's a cloud service, a multi-tiered cloud service. We have a web role and a worker role. Mm -hmm. The web role, basically, you can upload an image. The image is put into Azure Storage, and then a message is put in the queue, Azure Storage queue. And then the worker role basically picks up that message and processes the image and creates a thumbnail of it. Okay. okay. So let's do that with me. And let's launch it. Just to point out, right, I'm launching the app and I didn't have to switch to administrator mode in Visual Studio. Ah, right, okay. because I'm using Emulator Express, right. which is really cool if you make that setting. Mm -hmm. um, that's, um, I think we shipped that in 2.1. Right. So let's go in here, create an image. We got a lot of feedback, people working in labs and things like that, so this will just make right. it easier to use the tools. Upload it, so it basically is in a worker role. Let's uh, pass that breakpoint for a while and see what happens. So let's go to Azure Storage, um, Development Storage, go to Blob, Images, and as you can see, um, in the images container, okay. the blob, we have the image that I just uploaded as well as the thumbnail created, right? Good. Okay. Just to prove my point. So it's a thumbnail. There we go. Is so that you? Is that you wakeboarding? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that That's like where I want to be. Pretty good form. Like pretty good form for wakeboarding. Yeah. H is against me now, though. <laughs> so, okay, so one cool thing about our storage tooling here, I have to mention, because not a lot of people are aware of it, I can just delete blobs in here. Right? Yep. And obviously, I can upload blobs if right. I want to, right? Which, which is really ha pretty handy in a development scenario. Sure. Um, you can do the same thing for queues, right? You can basically add messages to queues. So let's look at the troubleshooting options first. Um, one thing that we um, added in the 2.2 release is edit and continue, which was frequently asked, was a common mm -hmm. ask from people. And just to give you an idea how it works, um, so that's, that's on top of the 64-bit edit and continue that was added to Visual Studio. That's right. It just expands it all the way for Azure Cloud Services also. Cool. There is one yep. caveat to it. Um, edit and continue doesn't work with W3WP. So right now I'm using IS Express, okay. uh, which is the default um, um, web server for development. If you switch to full IIS, it doesn't work okay. yet. So Got it. Still need to work. So it's optimized for the Express. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So let's, let's take another image. Right. 
upload it. And so I'm hitting the breakpoint here in my worker role. So now I can basically step through. And then I should have, can go in here and say, I want to do this. Right? So I just mm -hmm. updated a string here. Right, now let's go through and see what happened. Let's go back. Go to my images. And there you nice. go. Perfect. So it's, it's really awesome. cool. I was in debugging mode, right? Yep. I made some changes. It's, it's really handy. It's really cool. Awesome. OK, so one of the common problems we've been hearing from a lot of developers out there, right, and we really sympathize with them, is, hey, it works great. What you've shown works locally. Everything works great. Now I'm going to publish it to Azure, and it doesn't work. So what yeah. am I going to do now? OK. Um, let me talk you through the solution first again. and. Sh show you what we've done in the project system to help you with that. Um, let's go to the default ASP.x page, which is basically has the event handler for the button, right? Uh -huh. And that's where the, the, the image gets uploaded and the message gets in, uh, added to the queue. So this is um, a common like try catch block um, that most developers use, right? And then we catch an exception if something goes wrong and log an error. Sure. So if I just go to the log error message, all I'm doing is I'm using systems diagnostics trace dot trace error. Right. So this is actually really enough to get Azure Diagnostics working. We added that functionality back in 2.1, but I just want to point it out again. Um, the way we're doing that is if I go to the role designer for one of my roles, let's go to the web role, for example, and I go to the configuration tab, you see we have that enhanced diagnostics mm -hmm. uh, setting here. Right? So by default, we catch errors only, but you can also switch to uh, all information, or you can even add a custom plan. Let's say you want to add new um, system diagnostics data sources and stuff like that. But key is, um, if you now go in there and publish it to Azure, you're not alone. Or we don't leave you alone. We, do, we don't leave you without help, because Azure Diagnostics is enabled, it's hooked up, and as long as you use your uh, error handling, proper error mm -hmm. handling in the code, we catch the errors and we'll surface them in Visual Studio. Cool. Okay. So let's um, go to the Publish dialog. Let's go to the first step. And here you can see um, I'm signed in as uh, Dennis. Yep. So, Thanks, mm -hmm. Dennis. Uh, if I wasn't signed in, I, I think they would show like the sign in button, and I could just sign in. Yeah, right. right. That was was. And so was right here in. again, showing the benefit of the of the sign in. Um, prior to this, I'd need to go and download the the certs. Yeah. So there's a download button which takes you to the website. Then you <coughs> import something. Have to remember where you put it. Then go browse for it. It's not terribly difficult, but it's a lot of clicking and a lot right, of steps. Yeah. Right. Um, now you've signed in. That's all handled for yeah, you. Yeah. Exactly. So you're not you're not leaving cool. even secure assets around like that certificate. Yeah. You know, and we see people check that in sometimes, which we don't want to do. Yeah. So and then the you wind up with multiple you. versions on the machine because right. you forget that you had it there, and who knows which right. ones are up to date. So it's just yep. easy to do the right thing, though. Exactly. Yep. So the list of subscriptions you saw there on the previous previous page was uh, you know specific to that particular right. user account that yep. was signed in. So. If we click Next, the next cool thing we've done and we've listened, right, um, with regards to co-location and stuff like that, right, we added publishing to affinity groups. Um, the way we show that is basically in parentheses, we show basically the affinity group we published to, which is pretty cool. It's new. Um, publishing to affinity groups or affinity groups, just to be clear? Both. <laughs> OK. <laughs> you know, publishing well, to affinity group is, is pretty So good. explain what an affinity group is for those who don't know. So you know, if you build like a a service, a larger scale service, right? Um, you want to make sure that all your uh, services or your containers are pretty close to each other, or as right. close it to each other as it gets, right? Okay. That follows that co-location pattern. Right? So the way you can do that in Azure, you basically put everything in an affinity group, and Azure takes care of and keeps the, let's say, you have a database and or Azure storage and a website and things like that very close to each other. That avoids latency. So for example, okay. you don't have to go across So when service. you create a database, you pick where the servers are. When you create a website, you pick where the servers are. Um, so this way, you create an affinity group, and then you pick the servers. Uh, for, for example, West US, and then everything you put into that affinity group that handles it for yep. you. Okay, right. now um, it's a cue to Azure to keep everything 
Now, was that recent in Azure? When was that introduced? It's been around for a it's long been time. Around for a while. But in okay. the tooling, it's new. Yeah, okay. Okay. groups have been around for a while. Okay. We've just added. If you drop that down, Boris, you can see you can I still publish. I suspect it's to, an underused feature. <coughs> yeah, you can still publish to other regions, but um, yep. we're listing yep. the okay. groups here. Where you? Yep. Okay, so rewind back. We're still in. Um, we've tested our app locally. Right? Mm -hmm. um, everything worked, but I'm in a dev test scenario, right? It's very unlikely, and we don't recommend people taking that from your development environment and publish, publishing it into a production environment, right? right? So you probably want to publish it to, let's say, a uh, first integration environment, which usually is like a, a cloud service, which is used by developers, right? Lights up in the developer subscription. Mm -hmm. And then you can test, hey, does, how does my app behave in a real world scenario, right? Yeah. So for that scenario, um, I still want to be able to troubleshoot, right? So if I go to the advanced setting, we have a nice new little feature here, um, which a lot of people asked for, and we listened, and we made it happen. Um, enable remote debugger for all roles, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool, because what that means is now in my dev test scenario, for example, if I check that box, we package uh, the remote debugger, MSVS Mon, and a bunch of other like components we need for secure communication and everything, because you want to secure the traffic, right? Yep. Package it, put it into um, the, the package, like the deployment package, and then when, it hit, uh, when the package is basically uploaded and RDFE does its work on uh, unzipping it, right, and doing all that magic, um, we install the debugger and you're basically ready to debug your live cloud service. Cool. Uh, one thing that I want to mention here um, before I forget is going um, going in here. So the debugger really works best if you use a build configuration debug, obviously, because it's a debug optimized build. So sure. you want to you want to um, take care of that. So for time's sake, I don't publish, but we've basically run through the publishing flow now, right? I cancel. We published it right before we yep. started, and I think you've. It doesn't seen take a huge part. amount of time, but we got. Like, we don't want to yeah. stand around here about five minutes yeah. chatting. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's been drastically improved, right, over time because mm -hmm. right. we knocked it down by quite a bit. Okay. It's okay. standing up a few VMs. Yeah, it takes a yeah. time. <laughs> okay, so we published a service. Um, and looking at uh, the publishing log, just to show you, it's, it's up there. It's running, right? Yep. Let's go to my thumbnail service uh, production slot. As you can see, there are the two roles. Let's uh, view it in a browser. it up. Okay, there is the, the application. Let's browse. Let's take this picture, right? Upload it. Message sent to queue. Okay. So far, so All good, looks right? Good. Yep. Looks like as it was on premise, right? So let's check out the storage account. Um, now, this time, you notice I'm not going to the development storage account. I'm going to my live storage account right. um, because I want to test like all the Azure specific features. So I have my images container go in here, and I see my wake pictures, but I don't no see thumbnail. a thumbnail. So uh -huh. something something's really weird here, right? So let's see how we can actually get to the root cause of that issue. Um, if we look at the code of the front end page, uh, let's look in here. What's happening is okay. Um, I'm gonna get my file. I'm gonna receive the file. Then I upload the file to the blob, which Works as expected, right? And then I'm going to um, insert a message into the queue manager. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to um, basically print out mes message sent to queue. So apparently, that, m that code here in my web role is working fine. Um, but the code probably in my worker role, because remember from our architecture, the worker role basically picks up the message in the queue and then processes right. it. It's not working as expected. So let's look at the worker role code. This is my entry point here, my run, right? And here I have a try catch block. Let's set a breakpoint here and see what's happening. Okay? Setting a breakpoint, and now remember we enabled remote debugging. Yes. Right? So now if I go to my um, role itself, I see attach debugger, and I could also attach the debugger on an instance. So the difference here is um, if I attach the debugger on the role node, we attach the debugger to all instances in that particular role. Okay. Okay, so that means whichever instance gets the traffic first, that's where the the, uh, the breakpoint is hit. So for now, let me just um, attach it to the role because I have one instance, only one instance. Attach the debugger, 
And as you can see, hit it, and let's try it again. Grab another image, take this one, and then upload. Oh, sorry, I need to. Let's go back. I need to obviously go back to Fume Browser. Right there we go. There you go. Right. So now I'm so in my. So just to be clear, you are now debugging this app running in Azure. Yeah. That's Mighty really cool. cool. Mighty so cool. Pretty cool. This is live. It's running out there. This is this particular instance. I'm de debugging that instance in my live cloud servers. So as you, can, as you would expect, right? because it's a debugger, you can do everything you can do with the debugger on F5. Mm -hmm. um, let's step through it and see where the issue is. Um, oop. And this takes a while now. It needs to come back. but. See, because it's trying to, apparently something's going on there with my cloud queue message class, right? So it's trying to, to do something. Okay. And for some reason, um, it's not looking great so far, right? All right. And there it runs ah. straight into an exception. Uh -huh. So looking at, um, the exception itself, um, let's see what the exception message is. The remote name cannot be resolved. Can use the locals window, right? Remote name cannot be resolved. And then we'll find out that it's trying to read the queue from Dennis and Wes 2. Do you have a storage account like that? Uh, something like that. I don't think the two. Right. Yeah. So I think what we experience here, right, <laughs> it's a very, very common issue when when something's working locally uh -huh. as opposed to, hey, I publish it to the cloud, all of a sudden it doesn't work, right? Right. A lot of those issues are really configuration changes. Sure. So we can, we can look in Server Explorer and see if we have a storage account with that. Right? Yeah. So looking in here. I see Dennis and West, yep. but I see no two. Yep, there is no two. I forgot the I forgot Man, the there's the issue. <laughs> All right, so the other question is, OK, some people might have That's objections. That's pretty sure it wind up being Dennis's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boris would never have a bug. Yeah. No, I only have bugs. So, so. <laughs> so no, but there, there might be some valid concerns saying, hey, I don't want to use a debugger, right? Because debugging, I don't want to sit on a breakpoint. Remember when I talked you through the project itself, how we wire up diagnostics, mm -hmm. right? Um, we can do that here as well, because if I go to my um, to my roles now, or even to my instances, I can say a uh, few diagnostics data. Right? Let's look at the few diagnostics data for that particular um, role. And as you can see, I'm having a bunch of errors. Oh. And I'm catching the same error here. Mm -hmm. So we basically, with the diagnostics tooling, and we keep improving those tools, right? we give you more um, ways to troubleshoot your application. So if you don't want to use a debugger for some reason, some companies I talk to or I work with, they have some objections using a debugger in certain environments, right? If you use the Azure Diagnostics um, diagnostics functionality and you use trace.trace .trace error or mm -hmm. trace.trace .trace information, we catch the error for you. Fantastic. Or you can use the debugger, which obviously is my favorite because right. as a developer, you want to use a debugger. Right. Right. As an, as an individual cool. dev, when you control the environment, you can, yeah. you can lock the process and, and really debug it. And that's you know, going to be your comfort zone. If you need to keep the service running, there's a team of people. Yeah. Um, the diagnostics are great. You'll right. omit the traces, and the, the service will keep running. So. Yeah. A lot of dev test options. Exactly. Yep. I think as a bottom line, I think we, we're getting really <coughs> closer to, to finalizing the vision of a really full, uh, full holistic um, debugging and troubleshooting story. And I think with like the remote debugging options now, um, it's we got one giant step closer to it. Cool. All right. Yeah. Very, very cool stuff. Thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Awesome Thank stuff. You. Yeah. The Azure SDK 2.2, it's out, it's available. We'll have yep. a link to it on the show description. Go get it. Visual Studio 2013, out, available, go get it. And I said it before, I'll say it again. It's never been easier or better to do Azure development. The, the tooling is fantastic. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel like something different that you do. It's all part of the, of the development process. Tremendous work. Yep. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. All right. Thanks. So. 
Thanks, and uh, we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.